at the Olympic Oval in Calgary, also known as the fastest ice in the world, with the most world records broken in speed skating. This weekend, the Oval is hosting the Can-Am and ISU Junior World Cup speed skating competition. My goal is to pitch my photos to Impact Magazine. Being published in a high profile magazine would really help build my name and show my versatility in action sports photography. Impact focuses on real deal athletes. So my plan is to do a profile on Isabel Weideman, an up and coming long track speed skater who's bound to hit the podium. I started skating at the age of 12 in short track, just like at a regional kind of club in my area. Um, and then we had an outdoor oval that would kind of open in January, so we'd all be shuffled outdoors to go there. Um, so I kind of tried long track when I was probably like 13, um, and it's just kind of progressed from there. And I love going fast <laughs> in speed skating. I think it's, it's a little bit of an addiction for all of us here. Um, we love to go fast, and I really like to get better and see results. Um, and I love the speed skating community. It's, it's a lot of fun to be here every day, which is definitely a motivating factor to come out. I need advice on how to capture a split second shot with unnatural light. Who better to help than veteran photographer Mark Gallup? Hey, Mark! G girl, <laughs> you in. Good. Oh, this is a great facility. Cool venue, yes. Have you ever shot speed skating before? Uh, no, I've never shot speed skating, nope. No, I've never done it either. I skated fast one time, but that was it. Just one time? Just one time. Just this I one time from, I was going so bear. fast. <laughs> I think uh, speed skating for Gracie is uh, good, good practice for uh, her timing in photography, for her composition, for her, um, just getting it, kind of feeling the tensity of a sport at the same time, getting involved with it and and hopefully getting results out of it. Sweet. Well, do you want to go scope it out a little? Yeah, let's walk around. I chose long track over short track originally because I was better in long track and I think you kind of gravitate towards something that you're more of a passion or a talent for but I was also built a little bit more for long track just being so tall as like a, a really young kid so long track I was able to skate in my own lane and not have to draft people or kind of do my own thing which was really good considering I was like a foot and a half taller than everybody else so. What makes a successful speed skater like Isabel is uh, focus, concentration, and drive. Uh, commitment to the sport full time, um, commitment to uh, what you do off the ice as well as on the ice. I came to the UFC to skate on the indoor oval in Calgary. Um, we only have two in Canada, so this is one of the facilities that we have a chance to really train at and progress if you want to go somewhere in the sport. Um, I also came to go to school here. There's a lot of influence from the national team that skates here because you kind of you get to skate on the same ice as them and train alongside them. So all of those girls that skate on that team or even some of the guys that really inspire me to skate well. We train year round. We have this fantastic combination of um, super fast ice and a really great coaching system. It is a, an Olympian factory, I think. You hear the buzz? Yeah, I can. Yeah. Uh, I think these lights are kind of like a halogen light. They're actually a mix of uh, mercury vapor and metal halide vapors. They are. Good to know. <laughs> wow, there's a lot of skaters here right now. Yeah, I feel like the old guy all of a sudden. No. 
So no, young, you're the most immature. Oh, thank you. I'm the most immature person here. There's a 12 year old over there. <laughs> exactly. Let's see who can get the best shot of the day. Is that yeah, a that's challenge? Right. It's a challenge. Challenge accepted. Challenge accepted. <laughs> so here they come. Nice. My typical day would probably start out at about 6.30. Um, I walk here, so it takes me about half an hour. So you get here at about 8 o'clock, kind of, and then uh, warm up on the ice at 9. Um, off the ice at around 10.15. I have class from about 11 to 1. And then um, I either have a break in the day where I can kind of do some schoolwork, um, or I have afternoon training so that could be like weights or I run usually or sit on the bike. Usually I have a lab at night until pretty late so I'm here kind of kind of late some days around 6 30. After that I either either have a run to do or afternoon training or then I go home. They're fast. Really fast. Yeah it's a new sport to both of us. So uh, we're, fig we're both figuring it out a little bit, you know, and uh, I think it's a good start. Okay. Nice. Angle number two, let's see what happens. Let's see if we like it or not. Oh, here they are together, yes. There. Nice. Three shots together. That's good. Basically, we sit in this really low, ridiculous position. Um, we try to tuck our butts underneath us and we bend our knees so that our knees are over our toes. And basically we just, we try to get as low as possible to have as long a stride as possible um, to get all of your leg power into the ice. We have an arm swing as well, so generally when you're, when you're going really fast and you're trying to build speed, you'll swing two arms just to try to build some momentum. And then in the corner, we usually just swing one arm, so we'll put one arm on our back. Um, and that's just, a, I think, a tempo kind of thing, just trying to keep up the, the strides in the, in the corner. But usually when we're just doing long laps or easy stuff, we'll put both arms on our back and that's just um, kind of relax your shoulders and just um, feel really relaxed on the ice. So to not fall in the corners or to be able to um, do the crossovers in the corners, you really have to have a, a good lean, which is something I generally struggle with, I guess from skating so high up compared to other people, but um, yeah, getting, getting your body on a really good angle to, to the ice. You think it's very consistent of where the guys are, but there's so much tempo to it, there's so much uh, movement in the body laterally, so getting them at the right time, it's, uh, it's important. So it is, it is a challenging thing to shoot. Let's see what you got. Show me your best. Best photo? Mm-hmm. All right, this is my best photo. That's your best photo? Of our practice run today. That's a great photo. Where's the like button on there? I'm going to push the like button. <laughs> there we go. Good one. So, um, yeah, this is my favorite. Nice. I really like that one. Look at that guy's arm. Yeah, I wasn't I even doing that. Even like a flash dance thing or something. <laughs> if I did that with my arm, uh, it would I'd come probably off. break. It would fly off. Yeah. That's really good. Yeah, I like it. It's good. Something I can aspire to. Good job. <laughs> well, I think it's a tie, you know? Yeah. We got tomorrow. Tomorrow is going to be the tiebreaker. Yeah. Tomorrow it's game on. It's game on. I'm going to bring my A game. Friends off. I'm going to have a bag full of tricks I haven't told you about yet. Okay. Let's do this. Cool. Isabel is one of Canada's top prospects for the 2018 Olympic Winter Games in Pyeongchang, South Korea. She's hoping to set some personal bests this weekend and I plan on capturing every moment of it. This will be my first indoor shoot and I won't have a lot of time to scout out the oval to find the best action spot. But it's an oval, certainly I'll figure it out. I know the lighting is going to be tricky, not to mention the speed of the event itself. The races are quick and I need to be ready. Mark Gallup met up with me at the Oval so we could scope out angles and take some practice shots. Mark's mentored me over the last year. 
He's super funny and his photos are amazing. He's recognized worldwide for his action sports and lifestyle photos. I'm super grateful Mark was able to take time off his busy schedule to help me figure things out, so I'll be good for the races. The most important thing for Isabel is her coming into her last corner. Yeah. And they're going to be sprinting. They're going to be fighting for the inside right. line. So that's the money shot. No, it's just like it's hard on herself, you know? I think the desire to go fast, that's what motivates me. I want to get better and post better times and skate with faster people and um, represent Canada hopefully one day. So how many, how many races tomorrow? Two. She does two races? Yeah. Challenge for tomorrow is getting the right angle and getting the right timing and getting the right people. Tomorrow Isabel races. So I think maybe that's a good concentration to pull the story together. So we've shot two angles today. Yep. Corner one, straight on. Yep. It's a guaranteed money shot. Yep. So, so maybe do that for one of them. Do that, get that one and in. And then sure. get a corner for the second one. And then get a corner, perfect. Awesome plan. Let's do it. <laughs> This weekend we have the Junior World Cup, which gets us points for the Junior World Championships, which are in Warsaw and Poland. It's really cool. I've never skated in um, a World Cup before or a Junior World Cup, so um, it'll be really interesting to, um, to skate, definitely, as part of the, the team. Today, Isabel is racing in the 3K. Mark and I got into position and waited for the race to begin. The key to getting good action shots is to set up your camera before the event starts, so when the race begins, you don't have to fiddle with your settings too much and can focus on the action. I felt a little nervous for two reasons. I was nervous knowing that I needed to get a great shot of Isabel for Impact Magazine, and I was nervous for Isabel because I knew she wanted to do well and get some personal bests this weekend. I had a few laps to get shots of Isabel. It was a little tricky since the racers switched lanes after each lap, so I had to pay attention to where Isabel was going to be. I kept checking my camera between laps to see what I got, but there wasn't a lot of time to be sure. It was kind of intense as the race was coming to an end. I found it challenging because I wanted to look up and cheer Isabel on, but I had a task I needed to focus on. I think that's one of the hardest things about shooting someone you've met. You want them to succeed by cheering them on, but you know you can't compromise your work and possibly miss the shot. She has that, I just did a race look on her face. She doesn't look very happy with No, she, she might, she's like, she's like it's hard on herself, you know? I thought my 
my performance was okay. Um, I kind of wish it's gone a little bit better than it had, but it, it was okay. It was not okay. Well, Mark, I think you did good today. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. I like your input. I like, I like your feedback. It's important to me. I was a little bit nervous um, for this weekend, and I think I skate a lot better when um, I'm a lot more relaxed and having fun and kind of enjoying it rather than just um, stressing about it. We just found out that uh, Isabel is not in the mass start, so that's very unfortunate. So all we can do right now is pull up the best of it, Isabel. What you got? Um. We just found out that uh, Isabel is not in the mass start. So that's very unfortunate. So all we can do right now is pull up the best of it, Isabel. What you got? Um, a few warm-up shots. Yep. Okay. No kind of lifestyle. So let's scrap together everything, Isabel, and um, put a package together. Right, Make a so nice, tight little package. Put a ribbon on it. Hand it over to Impact Magazine. We're probably not looking uh, at using something like this until next until kind of September and November, or okay. yeah. So we're almost uh, we're almost past that uh, that window already for yeah. uh, for this year. You process this in black and white as well. So mm -hmm. what was the what what struck you about that? I have a thing for black and white photos, mm -hmm. <laughs> and all the colors and stuff. I felt like were taking away from just what I was feeling when I looked at you mm -hmm. know what her face and her body language and so then I think taking out the color makes it a little simpler. Yeah, I think I like this this photo better than than this one. Can, just comparing the, 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 to the two action shots for, for my purpose, I, I like the other one uh, way better, I, mostly because I think of the geometry of, of what's going on, sort of the perfect line. Yeah, it's nice. Lots of the times um, her arms aren't moving even. They've got them tucked behind. Tucked behind, and so streamlining. So that's why I think it was yeah, it was really hard to get this 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 one um, yeah. form. So the things that I would that I would look for would be, I mean, truly the story behind the yep. person that accompanies the photograph. A lot of times, there's something more to an athlete than just their athletic performance in in making a you know a, a really good or inspiring magazine story. Mm -hmm. Are you a writer as well as a photographer, or how does that work in your life? Um, I definitely like writing, mm -hmm. and um, I've always been interested in it. And I would be, I'd be very down to to get into that too. Okay. Well, um, I, w I would include the photos as as, uh, as part of a, a story pitch. And yeah, see totally. Where we can go. It's a pleasure meeting you. You Thank as you well. Lot. Thanks a lot for coming in. And I'll grab Great your photos. email, and then I will yeah. send you photos, and I'll start working on her story. There's the email. Awesome, Chris. Cool. Look forward to it. My first indoor shoot was definitely a challenge to say the least. The lighting was horrible and the races were super fast. After doing a practice run with Gallup, I was still unsure of how I was going to do. I didn't have the right lens for the job, so I decided to rent a bigger one for race day. I was counting on having five races to figure things out and get decent shots of Isabel but she ended up only skating in two. This threw me for a loop. At this point, I had no idea if I would be able to get what I needed for my pitch. In the end, Isabel got a silver in the 3K, but was still a little disappointed that she didn't have a better race or have any personal bests. As for me, I only had two decent action photos to pitch to Impact Magazine. Luckily, I shot pictures of Isabel's pre-race warm-up and got a couple of portraits, but I still questioned myself. Will this be good enough? Will Impact see the story I'm trying to tell? I met with Chris Wellner, editor of Impact Magazine. Chris loved my photos, but he needs me to write a story to go with it. I now know so much more about shooting inside, and when I step outside my element, I have to work a lot harder. I agree with Isabel. It's not just raw talent that will make you successful, but the hard work you put into it.
wants to try speed skating, I think good advice would be to just jump in at any point. I think you can be any age to be um, to start or to, to get good. There are lots of people who start in their late teens and there are lots of people that start when they're really young and I think it's just a really great sport to grow up in. I don't think you need to be able to skate well before you start speed skating. I wasn't involved in any skating sports. I really hope to one day be able to wear a Canada suit on a World Cup team or an Olympic team or a national team. So I really want to, to get to that point. That's, that's my dream. I would tell other athletes that working hard gets you places more than talent does. And I think that the more hard work you put in, the better the results are gonna be on the other end.